Hello and welcome everybody. We are live here once again and this is another Project Healing Water special. So let's go ahead and get things started. What we are tying tonight, get our lights reset. What we're tying tonight is a fly pattern called the Crelix. We're going to go ahead and just give it a few moments, let some people join in. So this is a variation of the Crelix. Um, uh, Crelix is a specific uh, name brand of a uh, flash type material. And from what I've read and from what I can tell, it is pretty close to, if not identical, to the Fly Tires Dungeon uh, Northern Lights Flash. So, yeah. We're going to go ahead and get this started here in just a minute. What do we got here? We got Jonathan Thompson. Hiya and a hello. -a. How are we doing tonight? So, we're going to be streaming uh, here every Wednesday from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock Central Standard Time every Wednesday. Uh, at least for a while here until, until, uh, you know, things kind of get returned back to whatever the new, new rhythm, new pattern will be with, uh, Project Healing Waters here in St. Cloud. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely different. I'll tell you that for free. Anyways, um, let's just go ahead and get this, uh, we're going to go ahead and get it started. We're gonna we're gonna be tying all night, so um, we're gonna get it going. All right, let me know uh, how the audio is. If my uh, background music is too loud, too quiet. If I'm too loud, too quiet. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, feel free to hit that uh, that like button, that big old thumbs up, if you like it. If you don't, hit that thumbs down. It'll hurt my feelings a little bit, but. I'll get over it. I'm a big boy. All right. So anyways, here we are. This is the Crelix. And I believe the full name for it is like the Craft, K-R-A-F-T, Craft Crelix. Um, but like I said, this is a variation. Um, and we're just going to have fun with it. I pulled out some different types of flash that we're going to be tying with. How to get things started, I'm going to use uh, this gold and green fly tires dungeon northern lights flash uh we're going to compare that to some we're going to try one just uh some straight flashaboo uh this is a, a 6901 and a 6996 uh sparkly red and a silver pretty standard pretty legit and i also have some of this stuff this is a uh, crystal flash type of material and yeah, we're gonna experiment. We're gonna do uh, some comparisons. And we're gonna tie them all the same. The method will be the same, but we're gonna tie, uh, tie these up with some different materials. Um, it's tied very similar to a Clouser Minnow. Oops, sorry about that, we just dropped our, our light. Just recharged my uh, solar res light. And knocking everything over with my shoulder here. Anyways, uh, it's tied similar to a Clouser, Clouser Minnow, uh, but there's a couple of subtle differences. Um, but we are going to tie it up. I am not using um, lead eyes for this. Painted lead eyes would, would be, I guess, a pretty typical common uh, thing to add in there. I'm actually using uh, some bead chain eyes that I clipped off of. Um, a bead chain. All right, let's go ahead and remove our hook. We'll get rid of our get that sample set off to the side. I'll we'll add it back to my little bin, the bin of others. I need to turn my my volume down. So now I can't hear myself time and time again. I'm not in a forever loop in my headset. Anyways, uh, hook. We are using a size two. 
Must add 3366. This is our standard this is our standard uh, hook that we use at the VA with our Project Healing Waters program. So that's what we're going to use tonight. All right. Let me get this started. Well, I'm using a 140 denier thread just because it's white. Got 210, that'll work too. But I'm just going to start with this white thread. And I'm going to start at the one third, two third point. With any kind of fly like this, you definitely want to keep keep your eyes balanced. Balance is what we're looking for. And these bead chain eyes don't offer incredibly too much weight, um, but you know these I know are readily available. So if you got a bead chain or a dumbbell eye, a painted dumbbell eye or, an, or unpainted dumbbell eye, lead eye, go for it. Send it. All right, we got James. He is on and you found the chat. Awesome. All right. So yeah, if I guess we could probably do, for those of you who are just joining us, let me let me do this real quick. Before we go too far, I'm going to turn that off. Okay, so uh, if you're watching on a phone and you're looking for the chat, you'll scroll down there and you'll just find videos and such. But what you, what you want to find is this spot right here that says live chat. And boom, there it goes. That's where we got our chat. I got my little iPod set off to the side here the volume turned off so there we go that's how we do that our thread still hanging out at our one third two third point some people if you want you can um, do um, a couple of bumps we'll do a little bump up front and a little bump in back what that makes is a slight little saddle little recess for our uh, shank in between the or the chain in between the two beads to rest in. All right, we'll come at an angle. We're gonna do a couple of turns this way, and then go perpendicular a couple of turns that away. So a few turns this way, a few turns that way. What we're looking for are X wraps. X marks the spot there. All right, so we're gonna continue our cross wraps. I need to Loosen my thread just a little bit. All right, Josh Anderson, good evening. Hiya and a hello. All right, we'll do a few wraps underneath the B chain eyes and a few wraps this way and a few wraps that way. And I held on to that hook because I'm really reefing down on that pretty good. And this bobbin feels pretty stiff, but. I'd rather have a little bit too much tension than not enough. All right, so those eyes, you know where those are going? Nowhere, that's where. Uh, one word of caution when we are dealing with our uh, bead chain eyes, these edges right there will be extremely sharp on the where that little hole is right there. Be caution, caution. That will uh, snip and break your thread, so little caution there all right let's take our thread and we're going to advance it towards the rear right to our standard main tie-in point between the tip of the hook tip of the barb thereabouts i'm gonna go maybe right there all right let's see what color did i want to do i wanted to do the uh yellow had to think about it for a second all right so I'm gonna take a small section of this and this is gonna be our final final amount we're gonna do it in one swoop one big piece for this whole whole fly no multiplying by dividing no folding it over two three times or anything like that so that's going to be it right there. Go ahead and trim that nice and close. 
All right, and in a lot of fly patterns, you want to have nice tapered ends. Uh, you don't like the big, you know, the square cut ends. Well, for some reason, in all the pictures and all the uh, reading I've done on this pattern, uh, that's what you see is the, that square cut end. So I'm going to measure that out. I know I'm going to trim this, trim off those stragglers a little bit. So I'm going to measure that out just a little bit proud. I'm going to go one hook's length. And then what I do is I just take my fingers to that two-thirds point. So about one and two-thirds hook's length. Transfer that one hook's length and a little bit more. We're going to transfer that to our main tie-in point. All right. A couple of initial loose locking wraps. And we'll, and we'll tighten that down. All right, so just a couple of turns in the back. We're going we're gonna to go back there. We're going to take our thread... I'm going to go all the way forward, just in front of the dumbbell eyes, the bead chain eyes. I'm going to lock this material down up front now. All right. Underneath the dumbbell eyes, I'm going to go right here. A couple of turns. There we have it. Open spiral, working my way towards the rear. all the way to that main tie-in point, just like we would on a clouser. And then we can do a spiral work in our way forward. All right, that's where we're at so far, right? It's all exposed, we're good. All right. Check this out. We have this tacked in up front. Let's go ahead and just take a couple more turns just to make sure that's locked in there. All right. So we're secured up front, and our thread is directly behind our bead chain eyes. And watch this. I'm going to fold this back and tie that in there. And that's it. All right. What we're going to find is our trim point we want to take this wing at that you know what let me go ahead and get this squared off so i got a good solid reference point what i want to do is i want to line up this wing this top wing at the halfway point of my tail just like that all right save this you could easily use this for another fly um, we'll save this for something else. Let's go ahead and just set that off to the side carefully. Let's do, we'll set that up there. We're not going to be dinging our hackle bell anytime soon. All right, there we have it. So that's the gold. We're going to go underneath. We don't want to crisscross over top of that because we, I don't know, it looks nice. So our thread's up front via this underneath passageway. And check this out. For those of you who have those fancy rotisserie rotary vices, you'll just rotate it over. The rest of us will uh, remove our hooks and go upside down. This just makes it a little bit easier. With some practice, yes, easily, you could easily uh, uh, just tie it underneath. But flipping it over, it's going to be much more easier. All right, so now for our underneath portion. Hey, Frank, thanks for tuning in. We're going to take our opposite color. And I'm going to go with half as much as what I want. Because we are going to fold this over uh, a couple of times. <clears throat> All right, we'll get that a nice close trim. Set that off to the side. And this we get to multiply by dividing. Pull that over once and trim that loop. Can't tell if you guys are able to see that. There we go. All right, and the second time we're gonna pull that over once more. Right about there. Nice proud clump. All right. Go ahead and tie.
tie this in. We're going to take one soft wrap to capture and get that group. There we go. Doesn't take much. And we'll bind that down. And we got all this kind of madness happening. So we're going to go ahead and just trim that down. Get everything behind the eye. The hook. I'm going to do that slightly different next time. I don't know why I did it like that. But anyways, let's go ahead and start binding this all down. We should end up with a nice little taper up front. I'll address any little randoms. Here we go. But, you know, actually, let's go ahead and we're going to trim our wing. We want this wing to be that same length as that opposite wing, which is going to be right about there. Let's go ahead and trim that. And then big clump. Which should be just a tickle past the uh, bend of the hook. Let's go ahead and just flip this whole bad boy over now. Just a little bit more. I like that. All right, and we'll take some more thread wraps, clean up our front end. Make sure we got a nice cone shape hanging out up front. And I'm using a 140 denier, so a couple extra wraps to build that up. And I'm satisfied. All right, we'll finish this off with a whip finish. There you have it. And we could leave it at that, but I'm actually looking at this thinking I have a yellow marker. This is a uh, Copic marker. And I'm just going to see if I can't Give that a little bit of color up front. Why not? Sometimes when you're tying with a white thread, you get to choose what color you want your... Uh, I'm even going to tag this collar right there. Why not? All right, so let's go ahead and add some head cement. You could use uh, good old Sally Hansen's or... For this, I am going to add some bone dry. All right, I'm gonna take a little drop on my bodkin. So I really don't want to cross contaminate that yellow marker into my bottle of resin. Do have one little little guy hanging. Down a tick. We'll just make sure we get a nice even spread on that. Alright, we'll give it a quick zap with the UV light. Get that to it here. And this this really stands out. I really like the way this looks. Especially under that UV light, it just glows. So that is more or less a uh, Acrylix. So that's how it's tied with uh, a material that, in my opinion, is pretty close to the Craft Acrylix um, actual material without having my hands on a bag of the original stuff. I can just use my mind's eye and uh, do a quick comparison. All right, so it looks like we got, where are we at? 11 people tuned in tonight. Thank you all for tuning in. 
Uh, this is our uh, weekly Project Healing Waters uh, special. Uh, if you are not familiar with Project Healing Waters, go ahead uh, at some point after this live stream. Uh, check out projecthealingwaters.org. Um, good stuff happening out there. Healing those who have served. That's what we do. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, do another one. What do you say, folks? What do you say? All right. Let's go ahead and remove this one out. I really like the way that, uh, that nose, that head came out with that white. Uh, the previous one I tied, I tied opposite, and I used uh, black thread. So we are going to nice fly, and what to do after this uh, fly? So we are going to tie another one. But we are going to go with uh, different colors. Our first, so this was uh, the Northern Lights Flash from the Fly Tires Dungeon. This next one, we're gonna try it with just Flashaboo. All right, this is gonna be just a straight Flashaboo uh, Creelix. Which is kind of interesting to call it a Creelix because it doesn't have any Creelix material in it at that point. It's a flashaboo? I don't know. Alright, let's get the hook and the vise. That's, that's my favorite sound. Hello. Hope, I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear the ding ding ding? All right, let's go ahead and we'll start with our thread, size two hook. Once again, we're going to start our thread at that one third, two third point. Trim that off. What fish is caught with this fly? Um, this is one of those uh, kind of universal patterns. Uh, it, if I were to fish this for like a trout or a panfish or something like that, anything that's going to go after a minnow, uh, this would be a great pattern. And this is a size two. We're tying this pretty big. And for this, around here, we're going for bass and pike. Bass and pike. But uh, I believe that this is an excellent uh, saltwater pattern. But like most flies, I, I, I really don't prescribe into the this fly is for that fish. You know, I mean, that's like saying Chinese food is just for Chinese people. That's, that, it doesn't work like that. But... Yeah, there are naturally. I guess there's, you know, what what a lot of people would just call a trout fly is, well, that's a fish that just sucks up more little natural insects and junk like that. Um, I don't know. Anybody else have any uh, thoughts or input? What do you guys think? What would you fish this fly for? Or yeah. Is that the right word? All right, we'll take our thread back to our one-third, two-third point. And let's go. Earlier when I experimented, I did a red and black, or red and silver. Now I'm gonna do a silver and red. So the main, main bit on this is going to be our red flash boost. So we actually need to get quite a bit of this out. So we'll keep picking some of this out. Use the little hook on whip finish. little bit more. We're going to end up with a little bit of, well, there we have it. We're going to end up with a little bit of scrap 
on this. Um, let's go with that much, because. Or do I fold this over? I didn't fold this over before. I had a little bit of scrap. Have yourself a big old chunk of that. Nice, nice big bunch of red flesh meat. Alright, what we can do. We can do our lift and lower. Oh, we forgot to measure. Let's measure this out first. Let's go. There's our one hook's length, and I know I'm going to trim a little bit of that off to square that off, so that's one hook's length, and there we go. I don't want to keep trying to do it that way. We need to lift and lower, come up from underneath, set it right on top, there, nice and snug. Go ahead and run this forward. And I like doing it this way. I, I think I get a little bit better control I'm doing this this way. It gets this out of the way. Now we can go underneath. more locking wraps up front and park our thread behind all right so question is let's see here uh, is there a good way to tie such a fly if you have only one type of flash or and regular beads um, yeah, imagination is your only limitation. Is there any pattern to tie with just flash and uh, just a regular, uh, regular bead? Yeah, I'm sure. All right, let's fold this back and lock this in. And I forgot I was gonna trim this one first. Clean up that end. Just about like that. Now we can take this. We want to trim this. Where did that halfway point? Right about there. All right, I'm going to save this flash. Why not? I'm going to just set that up and off to the side. I mean, I can get it to unstick off of my fingers. There we go. Pardon my reach. Let's take our thread, go underneath. Because we got that nice little bedazzle, bedazzle sparkle up top up front. Let's go ahead and flip thy hook over. Give us a little bit better access to this side. And you know what? Just because... I'm going to come in with my red marker and just tap that once. It's amazing what you can get away with with a little bit of white thread and a yellow or a, and a marker. White thread and a red marker. However you want to say it. All right, let's see here. We're going to go with our silver now. Get some silver flashaboo. And I think the static in this bag is more than what we can handle here. Digging it out, plucking it out. We need 
actually need a little bit. All right, a little bit of silver flash. We're gonna go, because we know we're gonna fold this over a couple of times. So we don't need as much as we did the first colors worth of material. Let's go ahead and fold this over once. And we'll trim our loop. And we're going to do that a second time. that over that'll work just trim into that all right let's go ahead and tie this in in front of the dumbbell eyes madness up shouldn't be too much we were able to keep most of it at bay This is like one of those live stream moments that I don't know why I'm doing it this way. Let me just take a couple more wraps, see where we're at on this. Fold it back. Maybe. And I can't hardly see it. I can't see it. There we go. Now we're making progress. We just want it to be clean. Here we go. Let's go ahead and flip this over. Give us a little bit. I don't know. For whatever reason, I think I get a better feel for my material and stuff. When I have the hook upside right and I'm less prone to sticking myself all right now we can go ahead and just take a few minutes and clean this all up see how much better that's working for us that's nice all right let's keep working on this that'll work all right and for giggles and grins this is how we're gonna do this cone we're gonna give this a spiral a red spiral so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tag this red spin my thread clockwise for a second that up all right so now <laughs> this is just being silly I'm just gonna do that see how that works yeah can't see it we'll just tag it with the regular marker here in a second It looked cool in my mind's eye, but actually reality, eh, I'll pass. We'll just get that all red. All right, 
So let's add our resin. I kind of like the way this one turned out. Kind of like it a lot. We'll get one little drop and just take a second, smear that around. See everything just kind of mixing with that resin, and see the color coming off on the uh, on the bodkin. There we have it. I'm gonna, I think we're gonna trim up the uh, it wasn't bad before I colored up the whole head. Yeah. The damage is done. It's done. I kind of like that red front end. And I want to clean up my uh, silver there. That evened it up. All right, so that's Crelix Variation 2.0. Let's check out uh, 3.0. This was my experimental one I tied earlier, a little bit shorter on the material. I kind of like this length, but I did it just the opposite. And the thing about how this is tied I don't know, in my humble opinion, it's almost a little bit backwards because we're tying this with the weight on this side of the hook. So it should ride like this, in theory. But reality is probably going to swim like this in the water. So I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and do our third flavor and then we'll kind of we'll be open for suggestions and um then we'll kind of go from there Let's go ahead and get our new, new blank hook in the vise. Oh, right on my fingers. That's all right. Let's go. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, there we have it. There's our thread. Still see a little bit of the red, but we're not going to worry about that. Start at that one third, two third point. Thread base. And trim off that tag end. Alright, so I'm going to do two little bumps. Some do this, some don't. For this, I like to do it, especially when I'm doing it with the bead chain. Um, you know, if I'm using a larger dumbbell lead painted, not painted dumbbell eye, uh, the diameter of this uh, is a little bit thicker. So let's get our thread right there in the middle. And hold it on the far side. We'll do a couple of wraps of this way. I want to move that forward just a little bit. Right there, a couple of wraps this way and a couple of wraps of that way. And then we can take our time, adjust where we want it. We'll continue with our cross wraps. Now, when I was watching Bob Clouser tie his Clouser minnows, 
He stops right there. That's it. Nothing nothing else to do, nothing else to see. Um, I like going underneath the eyes and over the shank a couple of times. Just takes everything and draws everything just a little bit tighter. Take a few wraps in back, a few wraps in front. And that's pretty darn sturdy, even without any glue. If you want to add a glue, add just a little dab of glue. You. That's, all you'll, that's all you'll need at that point. All right, so now we're going to move on to this crystal flash type stuff. Now, this is some old stuff, man. If this, if YouTube had smell a vision, kind of smells like old Play Doh. I'm not really sure. But, anyways, I got, I got some sections of this. And what's material if you never use it? So. Let's go ahead, and I got pink and I got blue. Let's go ahead and do the blue on the bottom and our double length, or our double piece. And this has been pretty, it's a pretty fine. It's a, it's not as, doesn't feel as crunchy as a, uh, as a standard uh, crystal flash, or a uh, crystal flash, yeah. I was thinking flash of ooze. So, anyways, before we start cutting that off, let's take our thread, do a little thread base to our main tie in point, roughly about between the tip of the hook and that tip of that barb as our reference point. And. This is going to be. our tail and our wing. Go ahead and trim that off nice and close. And just like we did before, we're gonna measure this out. We've got one hook slank and a little bit more. About a little bit about a hook and a half length. Up and around and down and through. Works for me if it works for you. We'll wrap our thread forward to in front of our eyes. I'm going to just lash it down in front. Then I'm going to go back underneath and address that back half again. And you can't even see this white on this crystal flash. Crisscross wraps, why not? You could easily just take touching wraps and cover that all up. That's fine if you want to do that, if that's your that's your thing. All right. We'll take this side. We'll go ahead and just fold it over. Oh, wait a minute. I do this every time. I'm going to go ahead and trim this back end just a little bit. Right about there. It gives us a nice clean end. I like it. Yeah, if you guys are digging this, um, be sure to check out my other videos. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. And there should be a little alarm bell. And that'll give you notifications whenever I post things or do things here on the YouTube channel. Alright, let's fold that back. Go ahead and give that a couple of wraps and let's just go ahead and get our thread up front and we'll trim this right about there all right let's go ahead and uh do -si do this we'll flip it over a rotisserie style give us access to the bottom I'm tempted, I'm very much tempted to just add a little red stripe. I'm gonna do that while nobody's looking. Just on that bottom side. That's it, no more. All right, next I'm gonna do the same 
as before, but I'm going to use this purple. So this was... I like the contrast between this blue and the purple. Lights don't do it too much justice in here. Um, reality is reality. Don't need to take a too big of a chunk. And this is some ratty stuff. Again, this kind of stinks and smells. Have to treat it like hair and clean it a little bit. Just fold that over once. This might be enough to just be done with it. I think that's thick enough. Let's go ahead and just tie this in, and we're going to trim a lot of that scraggle off here in just a minute. Right in front, actually, no, we can do it and give ourselves a little bit more of a handle on the front side, because we got plenty to work with. That'll actually give us something to bite down on. trim. There we go. Let's start wrapping our cone head and working our thread back and forth. And it looks like we've got some stragglers, some strays, but we're going to take care of those. Sometimes it's just easier to trim things off than Follow that line right to the boot there. And we'll just pinch that a little bit. It's actually pretty subtle on the color change between the, the pink and the blue. The other one was a, a little bit more pronounced, but that's all right. Now, imagination is your limitation when it comes to this. Like I said, the uh, original material was called the Creelix, so just by adding anything else, I guess kind of by nature, it's, it's, a, it's always going to be a variation, unless you're using the actual uh, Creelix material. Give that a one, two, three turn. So we got a little bit of red in there, but that'll be all right. And just pull it off to one side. Check our lengths. Everything's good there. <laughs> Check this out. This is a big. This was a big kind of funky straw that I came across and this will help get everything back there we go if you cut a slit in your straw what you can do I even have mine at a little angle so I can take stuff and fold it back and through I like that all right let's add a little dab of glue a little bit of solar res. Bloop. That's a big old drop. Good thing we're going to spread it around. Spread the love. Can even work that into the, in between the eyes up top because in theory it should be almost dredging the bottom, dragging on the bottom. I like that. We'll set it and forget it. I like that. You can see the red just underneath. Kind of like that. Kind of like that a lot. So that's Acrylix Variation 3.0. Questions, comments, concerns? Where are we at for time? We are what? We are at 6.50, 18.50. We have uh, another hour to go or so. 
let's go ahead and just take a quick pause check in see how everybody's doing I'm gonna, where are we at 12 viewers let's go ahead and um, let's do some shout outs let's do a shout out to our people's peoples in the comments uh, let's go ahead and uh, Let's go ahead. I don't know. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? Let's just... Which pattern did you like best? Did we like the... This is our options. We have the Northern Lights, the Flashaboo, and Crystal Flash. Northern Lights, Flashaboo, Crystal Flash. I think I need to shorten this up just a little bit. Steve Trybowski, thanks for tuning in. Here we are. We are tying some Crelix variations. Um, well, we're going to try to figure out which one we want to tie again. I'm going to leave it up to you, the viewers. Should get this guy to stay. Actually, what they do is right off of there. All right, so what should we tie next? Do we do a, yeah, I want, I want, I want some input here, ladies and gentlemen. This is where you get to, this is where you get to comment. Bum, 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 bum. Maybe for the second half, I'll tie with the camera out, pulled out on the wide angle. How about that? Everything's dialed in. Flashaboo. Uh, so Jonathan Thomas likes the Flashaboo the best. All right, so let's go ahead and um, since he spoke up first, well, uh, oh yeah, you had a question about uh, just a regular bead with uh, some flash. Mm. Do one with three colors. Okay, okay. Let's do. Because this, you guys, you know, anybody that's watching this later on. Um, okay. You know what? Let's do a hybrid. We're going to do a little bit of each color. How do we want to stack this up? up to us um, let's do let's do green northern lights with the purple I'm gonna do this for the tail because I really like this for the tail we're gonna do this for a wing and then we're gonna do with uh, red. I think that's gonna be this is gonna be our combination for this um, mashup. It's gonna be a mashup. Or, better yet, I'm just gonna use my bits and scraps because way up here, um, off to the side, I actually have my scraps hanging out. So we're gonna do that. We're not even gonna cut into any more of our flash yet. We might later. We probably will later. What for now? Oh yeah, red, red, red. Yeah, where'd my hooks go? There they are. So once again, these are Mustad uh, Turdy Tree sixty sixes. This is our standard hook that we use at uh, the VA for our fly tying program. Hey, listen, folks, uh, if you don't know about Project Healing Waters, uh, head on over to uh, projecthealingwaters.org. I got a little uh, ticker thing clicking across the bottom there. 
Um, you know, to be perfectly honest, and it's meant the world to me to just be involved with this program. Um, it's how I got my start uh, with fly tying, and I've had some really awesome people um, helping me along the way. Friends, family, and everybody in between. Friends that are me I consider them family and family that I consider family but you know it's I don't know it's it's interesting right now because the stay-at-home procedures that we're all sticking with um, but I think ultimately in the end you know we're gonna come out the best side of this but you know I, I feel very fortunate that I had this all set up to do live streams for me over the last six years. You know, I don't get out and I don't talk to a lot of people on a daily basis. It's just not my thing. But, you know, for me to be able to, to do a live stream from my basement and reach out to you guys and gals across this wonderful great nation and world and planet... You know, I don't know. Something to be said about that. I enjoy sharing my passion of fly tying. Right or wrong, somewhere in between. Like I always say, this is, it's a way to tie this. I'm never going to call it the way to tie this. How we dig in that camera angle? Do we prefer that? Or do we prefer the camera a wee bit closer let's take we're gonna go our one hook's length and a little bit more we're gonna end up trimming this off anyways we're not gonna tie this with the upward wing like we did before we are gonna tie it all the way forward though just to give us a little a little something something there I think right here we can go ahead and just trim this off. All right, and I'm going to add the red. So, this red, I'm just going to set this right on top, and I'm going to tie it in on both sides of that dumbbell eye. I'm going to do We'll lose turns on that side, and then we'll lock it down on the back. And again, why are we doing all this without any adult supervision? I keep forgetting to trim that back end off. Ah! So we're still getting the same outcome as far as flash and placement and junk like that. We still got flash going all the way and instead of reversing and flipping over we're just adding the new batch. So I suppose if all you had were small little pieces uh, this would be a good way to burn some of that up. Flatten your thread from time to time. Spin your thread counterclockwise or anti-clockwise, depending where in the world we're from. I think that's it for now. Just like that. I'm going to trim this. Right at that halfway point. Right about there. Not being too picky, see? Okay, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. We can do that. There we go. There's our closer. All right, let's go ahead and flip. And there's our, kind of our 
crystally crystal flash. No, for smart, we can just tie this in without having to cut that back end off. Let's do that. We'll just get that right at the operational length. I like that. Let's go ahead and trim some of that down. And this is where you want to be careful, ladies and gentlemen. Don't trim off your thread. A little bit of a bump there. Back in the jaws the correct way. So that's what happens when you take three different types of uh, material and make a Crelix out of it. Here we go. That'll work. I like it. That'll work for sure. for some head cement. And we'll go ahead and smear that around. I like that white up front. I don't want to add too much color. We got some flash up there, but that's all right. You know, you can, you can be real critical of your flies if you're selling them or giving them away or donating them, but we're fishing them. Yeah, buddy. Fishability is what matters. All right. Let's do this. So, what do you think? Wish that focus could get in just a little bit better focus. That's the thing about these cameras. Um, if I've got the focus locked, here we go. So when this hits the water and swims, in theory it should be riding hook side up. So it's kind of a little interesting combination you know what we could do if we really wanted to get weird about it we could almost just take a couple strands you know it'd be nice Maybe some peacock roll or something over that. I don't know. Let's tie another one. Let's go two, three. All right. Um, I'm going to take a quick pause, and I'm going to be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Quick pause. Let's go ahead and do this. I'll be right back, folks. Please, 
please stand by. Be right back. All right, we are back. Let's go back to the camera. All right, thanks for hanging in there, folks. What do we got? Dale Sanders jumped in. Uh, let's see here. And we got Frank. Frank likes it. He uh, hopes to try that on the Mississippi River for some smallmouth. Yeah, buddy, you and me both. All right. I'm going to do another one. Um, I kind of like... We're going we're gonna to do... Uh, we'll decide here in a second. I kind of like the, the Northern Lights flash the best. It, it's got the best feel to me. I think in my mind's eye, it represents what a... Uh, Trelix should should be like a little bit closer to the uh, the pattern. So, anywho, let's go ahead. We got flash everywhere, and I'm probably gonna track it all over the house. So, um, yeah, be careful, ladies and gentlemen. This is a uh, flash magnet. We'll start our thread back here at that one turd, two turd point. Looks like we got Jessica Husingfeld in the house. Hi, wife. All right. So these comments uh, during the live stream, they um after the live stream, they're gone. They disappear. I don't have access to them. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, feel free to go back to the live stream after I get this published out there with... Uh, the rest of the videos all right dumbbell eyes or b chain eyes rather go a couple of wraps this way just to get that first bite and a couple of turns that way now we can straighten it out and we'll do our cross wraps after we tighten our vise down nice and tight cross wraps And we'll do our over under and a few this way and a few that way. We'll get our thread to our main tie in point here at the rear. Oh, 
Let's go with the green main. And I'm going to add in just a tick of red crystal flash as an accent. Maybe a little bit more. All right, we'll measure this out. We'll go our one hook length. I don't know how I'm doing it that way. One. Not quite two. We'll go underneath and set it on top. Nice and tight. We'll run our thread forward. And I'm going to secure this just in front of the dumbbell eyes. My goodness, thank gosh for that mute button. I just had a big old sneeze. All right, let's go ahead and run this towards the rear. We'll do that in the open spiral, a couple of turns, and we'll open spiral it forward. All right, now let's find ourselves a little bit of red. Red flash boo. Just a couple of strands. Maybe three, maybe two. Where are we at? Three. We're going to take our three. Yeah, let's do it this way. Double that over, make that to six. like that. We'll just tie that in. Right on top. And why not? We'll just tie it in like that. And then, then we can fold this back. Give it a couple of turns. our wing. There. There, there, there. That's definitely a usable scrap. Got our thread up front. So that's just going to have that hint of red in there. I like that. I do, I do, I do. Alright. We'll get some gold. And remember for this side, we don't have to get too big of a chunk because we are going to fold it over a couple of times. Fold that over once. Then we'll trim our loops. Let's even do that a second time. Our cut length. We're just going to line that up, match it with the other piece from earlier. A couple of soft wraps to capture it, and then we'll batten down the hatches. Trim all this jazz off up front, and we should be good to go. Oh, 
over. I like that. It's uh, ready for a whip finish to the tray. All right, here we have it. And time for some head cement. Again, I'm just using some bone dry here. And I feel confident I don't have much hanging out up here, so let's just go ahead and go right off the brush. A little drop. I can smear that around. So who got the opportunity to see my uh, my blood my my uh, zebra midge post? Who got to see my April Fool's Day post? Because I have just been dying all day responding to people's comments and, you know, was it Photoshop? No. In fact, we'll, we're going to reveal a little bit of the magic here. So what I did earlier today for my April Fool's post um, is I tied up some zebra midges, size 20, right? Size 20 zebra midge. No big deal. It was a lot of fun. You usually don't tie that small. To me, much smaller, yeah, whatever. So, what I did is I tied up a zebra midge, and they're, they're size 20. They're really, really small. And one of the things that you always see is a size comparison with a uh, coin. So this, Trelix, for example, you know, somebody would say, oh, this is, this is what it's like in comparison to a, uh, a dime. And usually with the smaller flies, uh, it, it shows up. It shows up as a, uh, you know, you got three, four little, you know, little flies in there. But just like that, we're gonna do some, do some magic, and voila! Look at this. I tied a Creelix smaller than a dime, and what I did is on the picture, on the photograph, I actually I just cropped out the the jarru or whatever China, because this big fake American coin was made in China so this is how you uh, shrink a dink a fly um, you know you take a picture of that just sitting on top of it and some people might think it's a uh, just a normal fly that's tied super teeny tiny but you know that was it April Fools ha ha I also did a I shared uh, around a little bit my uh, top secret egg pattern TSEP that was a fun little one to to fly or to tie anywho let's continue on where are we at we got about 40 minutes to go what say you Set that off to the side. So we got one, two, three. I think I'm going to do another one with just the crystal flash. That's your new method. Yeah.
Well, thanks for tuning in, uh, Steve. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, give my best to the kids. Appreciate it. Let's go ahead and get another one. Oh, I forgot to mention. Oh, I wish I would have mentioned this earlier. It looks like we still got a you know dozen people watching in or so. Uh, the safety bug challenge. Uh, be sure to check that out. Hashtag safety bug challenge. Um, good things happening. I don't know where. It, I stuck it on my hat. So I wouldn't lose it, and of course I'm not wearing my hat now. Um, we'll have to find that. But any any of the social media, look up Safety Bug Challenge, and it's uh, it's a little challenge that uh, Bear Owens from the Charlotte Project Healing Waters, I believe he uh, I believe he gets the credit for uh, starting the Safety Bug Challenge, even though I'm pretty sure. It's one of those things that obviously he's not doing this for the credit. Um, but anyways, uh, at least that's where I heard of it from. Bear, uh, he is challenging everybody to tie a safety pin fly, uh, which I guess there might be a shortage of uh, safety pins. That's where that other one went. Anyways, um, <clears throat> yeah, the... the, the challenge is is to you know stay home stay safe and uh tie flies stay at my bench and tie flies too easy too easy all right so let's go ahead and start our thread yeah there's the scissors and we got flash everywhere I wanted to do with the uh, this pearl flash. Let's go ahead and get our dumbbell eyes at the ready. We'll do a bump on the back, a little bit of a cradle, a little bit of a saddle. At least on these uh, bead chain eyes. And again, there you go. Look at that's a prime example. See that little, kind of little nub it's sticking out. So yeah, we'll have to get Jess in on that safety bug challenge. That's uh, that's something you're gonna have to. Oh, I see it now. Jess is gonna want to tie up a safety bug mop. The safety mop, right? I'm just guessing, just guessing, I don't know. I haven't seen any safety mops yet. You might be the first. I've seen a lot of Kabari, a lot of Tenkara Kabari style. Uh, I mean, people are going going bananas on this. I, I feel kind of weak with my just my red, white, and blue woolly bugger, but hey, that's how I roll. Nice patriotic red, white, and blue woolly bugger. Because I'm the woolly bugger king. I can do anything. Alright. Let's take our thread to the rearmost point. Chunk of this kind of a pinkish, pearlish, purplish, kind of ratty tatty, crystal flashy. <clears throat> I think I've been, I think that stuff's been hanging around since like day one of my fly tying adventures. Okay. One hook's length. And back to the bee. and up and through the town.
and it's ready and it's a what available two pieces of red crystal flash or not crystal flash but flash of boo go on this side a couple of turns. Pull that big bad mamma jamma back. It'll be alright. Is that the old flipsy do? And what do you know? I just happen to have a little piece of blue uh, left over from earlier. So let's go ahead and just use that. Cut that at a slight angle, you will get a ramp opposed to a shelf. We'll get a cone instead of a ledge. Allegedly. Put this back upright. This one looks kind of fun. I like this one. I like adding just that little bit of red in there. Maybe I'll just, I could add the red, yeah. Let's go ahead and finish our front end up, making sure we got a nice, smooth uh, transition. bit of crystal flash sticking up there, but I think that'll be all right. I think that'll be all right. Well, I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, two-hour live stream is pretty tough to do. Starting to, shoulders are starting to get a little sore, reaching over the camera and such. But we're here. We're committed because we are... Alone together, together alone. I'll tell you that for free. <laughs> Let's see here. Do we want to add a little bit of color on that front end? Or do we want to leave that white? What do you say? Do we add some color or do we leave the head white? go we could go red we could go yellow gray I think I'm gonna do this yellow I don't know before I add a color you let <laughs> oh, oh got a cough All right, what color should we go? Should we go with yellow? Should we go with red? Or leave it white? Red, yellow, or white? Bum, ba -da -ba 
bum bum bum. I know we got a little bit of a delay. Uh, of about, about a minute. Well, it's a 30 second delay. So what do you say, folks? Do we go red, yellow, or just leave it? We could that we or we could go black. What color? What color? What color? I'm gonna leave it up to you, ladies and gentlemen. Leave it white. It looks good. Thank you, Josh. That's what I needed. Josh wins. We're gonna leave it at white. And we got a yellow. Too slow on the yellow. We're gonna do. You know what? We're going to do just yellow on the next one. We're going to do a solid one color. And then we'll do a yellow. It'll be all yellow. Call it Mr. Yellow. Now, come on, Jess. You can't say white or red, no black. Come on now. That doesn't make any sense. I know what you mean. All right, let's do one last one probably. This will be our last one of the evening. We're gonna take our time tying it. We're not gonna whiz bang through it too fast. Let's go ahead and dig out one more hook. No, I lied. I don't want to use my white thread. We're going to go. We're going to go with our black thread. Let's go ahead and start our thread. And this is actually uh, a 210 denier. Before, we were tying with a uh, 140 white. And I think, I don't know, in my mind's eye, Never mind. I'm going to add the black at the very end because I don't want the black to show on the inner body, if you will. So, just as before, to be fair, I'm going to do a little bumping back. Bump in front. And this is going to be the last one because I'm out of, uh, what do you call these? Beaching. At least that's prepped. I got more beaching. I just got to sit down and cut it up. When you get a chance, Go ahead and head out to your local hardware place or while you're out and about and you see some bead chain, go ahead and uh, get yourself some. Various sizes. It's, it's relatively cheap. I mean, it's just a few bucks a foot, if that. And you get a lot for a foot. Um... Another option is, if you're in a pinch, just take it right off your ceiling fan. Just know that um, you're not going to have that much to go for um, later. So, All right, we got our, uh, our eyes are on. And we'll go ahead and take our thread all the way to the back. We'll go ahead and get the conversation... Um, going as to what we should tie next week uh, let's see here 
Let's zero this out. I have no idea how they uh, measure these. There's our 0.17, so 17 hundredths. Which, whatever uh, standard, I guess that would be kind of close to what? Quarter inch? No, 0.25 would be a quarter inch, so it'd be less than a quarter inch. Eighth inch, thereabouts, eighth, eighth inch bead. What is that in millimeters? That's a four, four millimeter. Four millimeter bead, thereabouts. Um, I've got it in various, various sizes, large and small. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a small next to a kind of a medium large-ish, but go ahead and get yourself some various sizes and they also come in like plastic I've seen you get some plastic ones all right this is us on the bus well I don't know let's go ahead and start with our yellow for our gold rather not too much some of that back just a little bit save a little bit for next time Hook and uh, not quite two hooks length. Spin around and through that town. Bump our thread forward in front of the B chain. trim this do some square in the back because I keep doing that every time oh yeah um, smaller hook if you got a smaller hook switch everything down if if your hook and your eyes and your B chain eyes are uh, matching a little bit better uh, stick with that and then just scale your material down a, a bit. That's what I would recommend. Alright. We'll do our fold over. Go ahead and trim that right at our halfway point. Hang on to that. We don't want to go too far with this because we're going to actually tie this in on the other side as well. We use our little hair clip to hang on to that for you. Not only are these little hair clips great for holding on to material while you're tying on the actual hook, but it's great for digits, the little... Uh, holder when you need an extra hand all right and we're just gonna send it let's go ahead and take this and we're gonna tie this in right there and trim that other half off that'll be fine 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 that works get that little piece and I'll trim this at a little a little little bit of an angle yeah we'll save that for one more fly later maybe tie it 
tying some flies tonight or tomorrow. Just using my little scraps of flash from tonight. Flatten our thread out by spinning it anti-clockwise. Just make sure we got a nice bite on all that. forward. We'll pause there. Oh, we want to trim this down a little bit. Just to give us a nice square. I don't know why, but for this pattern, that's, that's what you generally see. It's those little square square ends. This is a case of the Golden Creelix variation. more wraps flattening that out let's make sure we got a nice solid head up front there we go all right where did my uh now i'm at a crossroads again We're at the crossroads again. Yellow or black nose? I think I want to go black. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go with the black front end up front. So for this time, this one, let's just get our thread. We're going to do our thread first. We're going to get the whole, whole thing and then we'll touch it up if need be. See how we can just cover that all up. And then we'll just add a little bit more because that's what we're going to get into our whip finish. And it's easy as one, two, three. trim excellent and a little dab of resin now because I used marker I'm not going to use my applicator brush and muck that up so I'm just going to get a little drop on my bodkin Mr. Bodkin let that soak in there. Spin it around. Get a nice clear coat. Ooh, that's nice. And zap it. Set it and forget it. So, what do we want to tie next week? I was thinking about something. I don't know. I was thinking about something maybe with some calf tail. Or something with some squirrel tail, or something a little bit smaller, maybe panfish. What should we do, ladies and gentlemen? What's. We don't have to decide, decide 100% right here, right meow, but. I do think. I think that'll work. Um, I don't know. I'm always open for suggestions. Got a few, got about 15 minutes left here. I'm not going to tie another one. Well, we can just sit here and talk. Um, actually, we will tie one last one because I found a bead. Who was asking? Somebody was asking about just a bead and flash. So we're going to do that. Set that Creelix off to the side, and I bet you I can get this bead on here. <clears throat> first things first with our beads, 
And do this with all your other flies. If you're going to be catching and releasing, go ahead and smash. Smash that barb. I like to smash them on the river side. Let's me know if it's a new fly or an old fly. I'll let that pause there for a second. This is a big, giant bead. I don't know. I don't know about all this. This is huge. This is huge. Holy smokes. Um, huh, that was interesting. Oh, I see. I see, you bopped the camera. Um, we got our this, we got our that. This is what we're going to do with this. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go with our black thread. I want the 210. 210 down here. We'll start our thread right behind there. This is something you can do with uh, just a bead head and some thread. We're going to lay a little bit of a thread base. Not worried about that bead quite yet. I'm just going to go about 50 50, about halfway. We're going to make a dubbing loop. I'm going to take my loop about that length, right about there. A couple of wraps around that to keep our loop from untwisting. We're going to park our thread up front and get that out of the way. Um, like with most dubbing loops, um, we're going to wax. It's a nice sticky wax. I think you guys might see where we're going with this one. Uh, Josh says he will be tying or trying to make up some uh, peacock caddis and possibly some JDKs. Yeah, buddy. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to take our scrap bits of flash. And we're going to make a dubbing loop out of it. We're going to take these and mix that in. And we're going to take our little bit of gold in there. my Lego tool. Spread this all out as best as we can. Ridiculous, isn't it? I know. Spin that loop. All right, coax all that to one side. A little kind of a green and crystal flash mix, and then we'll, looks like we're br brushing into that yellow. But this is all this fly is gonna be. It's just our flash and our dubbing loop. Pull it all to the back. We don't wanna trap it all as we wrap, but we're gonna space this out. Maybe a ribbing or something would have helped us in there, but this is the end of the live stream madness. What can you say? What do you do? Can it be contained? No. But moving forward, um, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. Every Wednesday, we're going to keep this up until uh, they get us back into the VA hospital 
Um, or, you know, the my project Healing Waters programs kind of completely adjust and we do something totally different. So, yeah, who knows? Who knows moving forward? So much has been changing so fast in so many places. It's hard to keep up. Um, I never spun that around there like that before. That was pretty cool. Alright. I like that. We'll just trim that off. Hey, Ken. Ohio. Ohio can... I want to do... I want a little something around this collar. I need... I need something back there. So I'm just going to add some strung peacock. This will get us a nice little bushy. Little bush leaf back there. Let's twist it up. like trimming these to get these out of the way good evening or good morning Ken yeah viewers from Japan I always like the international audience it's so much fun yeah well, this is our little kind of a freestyle jam session right here right now. I like that little peacock collar. That's pretty dope. Jam that right behind that bead. Man. I actually like the way this came out. This is, uh, this might actually be my favorite fly of the night. The, the last one. And uh, the colors on this are just fantastic. So, we'll see how this guy fishes. Let's go ahead and just kind of pick this out, brush it out. There we go. Well, that's two hours of tying live. Um, it's April Fool's Day, folks, but it is what's happening out there is no joke. Um, I want to wish everybody to be safe, happy, and healthy. Um, to my friends, family, my veterans from uh, Project Healing Waters uh, and everybody in between. Um, <clears throat> you know, moving forward, I, I say that a lot because that's all we can do is just move forward and, you know, be optimistic, uh, have patience with everybody because, you know, we're all in this together and it's up to us to uh, be better about it so uh, be sure to check out the safety bug challenge hashtag safety bug challenge if you're not familiar with project healing waters I highly encourage you to go over there and uh, check that out project healing waters.org um, hit that subscription hit subscribe um, here on YouTube like follow subscribe hit that like button let me know I did a an awesome job here tonight um, I'm one of those guys, I need that validation. Um, what can I say? It's all, the numbers mean everything and nothing at all. Um, but, yeah, I, I really appreciate uh, being able to spend some time with everybody tonight. Um, yeah, so, hope you learned a little bit. I know I had a lot of fun. 
And uh, let's get some Creelixes tied up. Shoot me a text, uh, or not a text, but uh, uh, leave a comment below after this video is available to watch uh, with some suggestions as to what we should tie next week, Wednesday. Um, follow along on Instagram. I'm always doing uh, live streams on there as well. So, all right. I think we're going to call it a night. Thanks again, everybody. Stay happy, stay healthy, and uh, tight lines. Peace.